Hey everybody, what is up? Hoshi here with another video, or should I say, a video about, well, RTSs that you should get right now, because guess what? The Steam sale is almost over. Now, I'm a little late. I wanted to put this out on the 1st, but I, something came up, and I had to leave the 31st, and I've just got back, and it is the 4th. My apology. This video is very late, so I've actually had to cut a whole bunch of stuff out of this uh, video. Um, I wanted to add other games in here from other genres, but for now, we're just going to stick with RTSs. I might make another video for just those other uh, genres another time. So, for now, this will be just for all my fa people all who are subscribed to me who love RTSs or uh, don't really know what an RTS is or and, I guess, want to get into it. RTSs, RTSs are basically just um, building games with building armies and units and attacking because all in real time and yeah RTS just let everybody know stands for real time strategy some people don't know that so uh, let's get into the video all right the game you're seeing right now, guys, is, is Spellforce 3, Soul Harvest. Now, this is actually, I believe, the first DLC or slash game, because when Soul Harvest came out, it wasn't really a DLC, because it's its own game. Um, so, yeah, anyways, so this is Spellforce 3. Spellforce 3 is originally standard. Um, it has humans, orcs, elves, and that's it. And it has a campaign. Which combines RTS and um, RPG. So what you guys are seeing right now is a is not a, a multiplayer game, but a skirmish. Uh, I set up with AI. What you guys see in Soul Harvest, there are two new factions. There's the Dark Elves and the Dwarves added to the game. And the new DLC that just came out for this game, or it's new season, adds a new race called Old Ogres. So that's pretty cool. Also, keep in mind, Soul Harvest and the Ogre campaign both come with campaign uh, uh, games. Come with a campaign, so you guys can play the campaign. I've been playing through uh, Soul Harvest's campaign, and I love it. It's pretty good. Um, it's I haven't played the uh, Spell Force Three campaign. Um, I'm actually debating on getting it. So uh, yeah, if you guys are into an RPG slash RTS, this is the game for you. Um, it com I think it does RPG really well because you can build your character in the campaign, Ru and, and you can build the characters how you like. Uh, adjust their skills. If you want a tank, you can get a tank. If you want a an archer or whatever, you know, mage, you can do all that. You you just have to figure out what you want to play. You can do it. The game's very really fun. If you are into like the RPG slash RTS, I think this is for you. And if you aren't an RTS player and you just want to play an RPG, this will actually, I think, get you into the um, into the style of RTS. Um, yeah. We'll see you in a second. A little laggy here and there. So we have two players. We have Saxton and Trigol. If you guys don't know what this video is or this game is, it's fine. I'm going to tell you right now. You should probably go get this because right now, on the sale is two dollars, and you should pick it up because this is a really good RTS. Now it's a real interesting or weird-looking uh, art style, but trust me, it's really good. You're gonna love it, and no doubt, you're going. You would 100% love it if, one or once you figure it out. Um, this is a very unique RTS in my opinion because I've never played an RTS like this before. And I suck at it, but I've, it's really fun. So as you, the way you play this game is you progress through building, far, capturing farmhouses, and then building on little farmlands, and they which generate you points and resources. And then you build little burrow bases, and the burrow bases will do troops. And the way you get this, this game is very interesting because it's very strategic. You have to pick out six or eight. Or I believe 10 is the max in some, uh, depending on how you play the custom modes. Uh, you can you pick out what you want, 
and you strategically use them to your advantage on randomly generated maps. Now, I'm actually, I'm not sure if the maps are all randomly generated. I'm pretty sure there are some maps that you can just pick out of play. There are also some workshop maps you can download. I have a whole bunch of them, and they're really fun. Some of them are really fun. And if you're going to buy this game, I highly recommend you at least get a friend to play with buy it with you. It's cheap. It's $2. You get a group of four and go play some of the custom maps. I think you'll love it. They're really cool. Anyways, this is Tooth and Tail. There's a campaign. Four, uh, four campaigns, pretty much I believe, are going to be the same. I haven't played it yet, but I'm so excited to play it because right now I'm trying to finish up some older RTSs. And yeah, once I'm done with those, I'm going to get into playing this campaign for you guys. Get another Hydra. Warhammer Gr Gladius. Relics of War. This is technically not an RTS. But I put it on this list because there are player people that love Hexic games. And I'm not going to lie. This is my first hex Hexic game, and I love it. It's because, well, mainly because it's got my favorite thing in the favorite uh, uh, series, which is Warhammer 40k. If you guys don't know, I'm kind of a, a big Warhammer 40k f new, uh, nerd right now. I love, I just love this series so much, right? My favorite fraction to play is the Ostomatatis, or the Imperial Guard. They're my favorite fraction, dude. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, but if you guys have not heard of this game, it is a very fun uh, game. Now, there are some balancing issues in the game, but it comes with all Hexic games from my understanding, from what I've heard from Hexic games. Every Hexic game has issues, but let's just get stick with what we're going right now. This is a fun game. You should pick it up. There's multiple DLCs out right now. And I'm waiting to see how cheap the DLCs can get because I'm not spending uh, the money right now. But maybe in a year I'll pick up the new DLCs. Which, if you guys don't know, the new DLCs that have just come out are the Craftworld Eldar, Eldari, and the and the Tau. These are two new fractions that have been added to the game, along with or um, Chaos Marines and um, Tyranids. They're both new fractions that were added about a year ago. I, bought, I own those two DLCs, but I don't own the new DLCs that have just come out. Me and Gyros play this game not all the time, but when we do, we have fun. And if you guys want to play this game, I recommend you guys you buy it with a group of friends. There is a campaign, and it's not... Yeah, I don't know, man. It's not the best. It's okay, in my opinion. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm playing it. Uh, I'm kind of behind on it, I don't know, I haven't played in a while, but yeah, anyways, the game's really fun, you guys should get into it, um, yeah, it's my first sex game, I just thought I'd put it on this list, uh, I'll see you guys in a second. Screw it, I'm putting it on the list. This is Warhammer 40k, Dawn of War, Soulstorm. Now, if you guys don't know what this game is, and you're probably looking at this and saying, and turning off the, the video now because of how old it looks. And you're right, it's old. It's a two, the game came out in like 2005, I think, if I recall. But, you, this is not the original Soulstorm you're looking at. This is the mod called ultimate apocalypse ultimate apocalypse builds upon the soul storm game and adds a whole ton of new units a fuck ton of units to be honest it adds tons of new adds the new fractions such as the tyranids it adds the uh, uh inquisition it adds the chaos demons and i can't remember there's a one, I think it adds an artifact, but it also adds a whole ton of units to the base game, including giant vehicles, that li giant uh, walking tanks that take up the entire plane of battle, and it just giant things that just take up your screen. 
it open. So it gives you the zoom mod, and you can scroll out, zoom in. Um, just tons of units that aren't in the base game to be right to be uh, fully there. It's a it's an actually community made mod, and I've actually d had this game for over two years, and I enjoy every moment of it. There is a there is a community playing this game and playing the Ultimate Apocalypse mod. Um, the mod is not too hard to install. Uh, it's really simple and easy. Uh, literally, there's a YouTube video you can watch on how to do it. It's so simple. You, it, 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 it's a joke, not to be honest. Like, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, I'm going to put a link into the description for the guy's channel if you guys want to get the Ultimate Apocalypse mod. Uh, I think it's, it's name, his name is Lloyd's Lord Siron. Uh, Siron. I, I might have said that wrong. But yeah, I'll put a link to his channel. Check out his channel, subscribe there, and you can probably... And through subscribing to his channel, you'll be able to watch the videos. I'll easily tell you what to do. It's not hard to screw up. The game is fun. This is a true RTS. And it's also made by Relic. Yeah. Relic. The people that made Command and, uh, Company of Heroes and Company of Heroes 2. Yes. Back when they used to be really good at making RTSs that had giant, ba had tons of base building. Uh, yeah, anyways. We're gonna move on. Delphia uplink successful. Welcome back, Commander. Today's threat level is low. Yes, I know this is an old game, but you guys should pick it up. This is Command and Conquer 3, Tiberian Wars, and I also recommend you go pick up Kane's Wrath. Uh, or should I say, Command and Conquer 3, Com Kane's Wrath. Go pick that up. It's also $4. It's really cheap. You guys are gonna love it. Anyways, this is a Command and Conquer game. You shouldn't you know, there's no way you can hate it. A a anyways, this is a series that's always been solely, you know, attached to me throughout my life. I have played Command Conquer One, Command Conquer Two. I played Red. I've played the Red Alert series, and I also played Command Conquer Four. But uh, the CDs just are broken. And my favorite out of the series is Command Conquer Generals. Unfortunately, I never got a sequel. But yeah, that's my favorite out of the series, and. Trying to find a copy of that that actually works is completely rare. Literally, you can't find a copy of Command and Conquer Generals. EA, remake, remaster, Command and Conquer Generals. Please, it's a really good game. It's my favorite RTS out of all the all the Command and Conquer series. But still, Re Command and Conquer the Tiberium War series is really good. In fact, remaster more of these. This is a really good game. Bring it back. Just do remasters. Make the game look pretty. Berlin. The last stronghold of those fascists who still had the will to fight. Company of Heroes 2. Alright. You guys should have figured this was on the list, to be honest. This is a really good RTS. Now, to be honest, it doesn't have base building like the first one did. Well... Real base building, but it's somewhat base building. But it really, really strives at being an e an, an esports game. That's what it really was meant to be, in my opinion. It was designed to be a fast-paced military uh, tactical shooter, or not tactical shooter, tactical uh, RTS, where you can move your troops around, retreat them, reoutfit them quickly and fast. Basically, it is really good. It's really good at what it does. Um, unfortunately, in my opinion, it loses the base building, which makes the gameplay faster. But it it kind of hurts my feelings because I love good base building in my RTSs. But I can see why they did it, and it really does make the it really does make the game fast paced, and it makes a good makes good for esports. And multiplayer is pretty fun. Um, keep in mind, this is a relic-made game. So, yeah. This basically has multiple fractions. But in the multiplayer, you, in the, this is in a campaign. It mostly has a campaign for Russians. And then it has a terrible, boring campaign for the Americans. Oh my god. The Battle of the Bulge. Which is cool. You know, I like the Battle of the Bulge, man. That's really good. You, but... You couldn't have made it better. You couldn't make doing like 
a little bit more. Like, you know, put a little bit more effort. You know, like, cutscenes or actual, like, I don't know, um, remorse? Like the first game? Or, or you couldn't give us a German campaign? I, I, hello? Okay. Okay, when you make another company of Heroes game, uh, Relic, or whoever owns the license, I don't know if you still own it, Hey, hey, can, can you do this one little thing? Make a Pacific one. Because the Eastern and Western Theater have been done now. So, uh, make something in the Pacific. I don't know, give us China and versus Japan. Uh, Britain and America versus Japan. Hello? Give us a different side than just America, Russia, Britain... Like, why can't you do? Why couldn't you do the first game? The first game is awesome. The first game is really good. Literally, it gave us multiple campaigns, but a lot of them came in expansion packs of DLCs. But it, it, but that's not the point. At least you gave us something better than Bow the Bulge. Anyways, you guys should pick this game up. It's very fun. And but I do not recommend you pick this one up because the next one, the next game. I highly recommend you pick that one up before you pick up this one. Awaiting orders. Let's get going. Engineers ready for work. Iron Harvest. Oh my god, I've been waiting for this one. For ye for at least three years, dude. I've it's finally out. Well, not really. Not quite out. Um so what is Iron Harvest? Iron Harvest is literally Company of Heroes 2, but it does it better, in my opinion. Well, well, it, it, not, I don't know. Maybe it's on the same language, a uh, language, a uh, lane wave, uh, wave. Uh, I don't know. I can't say that. Anyway, so let me explain what this is. So it, this is a mixture of Company of Heroes 2 and a more um, relic base game, uh, relic base game. For example, if you ever played Dawn of War 2, it, it's like that. It's like Dawn, Company of Rose 2 meets Dawn of War 2. Um, Dawn of War 2 was really just, you had one little base and you built all these units and you pumped them out and you take points. Well, this actually has Company Hero style base building, but instead of like uh, bringing your troops in and building, bringing in a vehicle and build, driving it in. No, you can build your base. You build the base using engineers, and you have um, heroes that can help you on the battlefield. You have tank. So this is a very steampunk version of uh, um, of Company Heroes Two. Now, let me give you the story because right now, if you, the gameplay you're seeing in the background is the beta, or not the beta, is the free de um, alpha that everyone can play. Go play it right now. Literally, go play it. It's free. It's free. It's fun, and it's free. For an the game, you can actually purchase the game. It's $30.99 or some of that. But I'm waiting for a better discount, because I can. These guys who made this game are really good. They, this was a crowdfunded game, and what I've seen so far is amazing. If you guys, okay, go get the free game. Go get the free version, because you get the full first campaign for free. Anyways, so what is the story? So the story of this game, of the campaign, I'm going to spoil a little bit. You have currently three fractions. There's a DLC that just recently came out too, but it's just a revolution for Russia. Um, you have three fractions. Really, you have Polonia, Saxons, which is just Germany and Poland, uh, Germany, Poland, and the Russia or the Russia, Russians, like <laughs> whatever. I don't know. And that's they're basically fighting. Uh, Polonia got into a war with Russia, and Russia won. And they're now looking for some secret technology. That's what the storyline is. But and, and that's as much as I'm gonna go into because. I don't want to spoil the game for you guys. Uh, the game's got some pretty unique cutscenes. The game's not fully done yet. I can tell because it's early access in some parts. Um, 
game balance the game has some balancing issues here and there with flamethrowers and stuff like that but the game is really good it brings um i i think it really does a give um what's it called uh, it, it it really gives brings the what we needed it really brings uh esports what like what company heroes 2 did and uh, actual somewhat mil- uh, base building and tactical tactics to the same four front friends. The game is fast paced. It's quick. Base building is also the base building is also pretty quick. Um, you, now I do feel like there needs to be some more f- features added to the game, such as a retreat thing for your units, because having to click them and gr- bring them back, uh, bring them back to your base is kind of stupid. Um. I like how they made the game free to play. I think that's brilliant. And I think these guys know what they're doing. I th- and I want you guys to look out for this game and subscri- um, and get it. Support this game all the way. If you're an RTS player, you should be supporting this game. Especially if you like esports and stuff like that. It is, and you want games to grow. Support this. This is also crowdfunded by an indie dev team. This is what we should be doing right now. Now, this is the last uh, buyable game, technically, on this list. I'll be getting into the last game in a second. Command console activated. Zero K. Zero K is a really good RTS. Now, I take it back. Actually, it's an okay RTS. Um, It's very hard, in my opinion, to play against bots. But, maybe it's just because I'm not very good at it, whatever it's So, this is a very uh, interesting, you choose what you want to play as type of game. So, you have... Two, actually five choices, uh, four choices in this game. You have Strike, Gur, Engineer, Guardian, and I forgot the other one. Um, I think it's Asker. Okay, so each of them have different, these are four different classes that you can play as when you're doing, when you're playing the Builder. A Guardian is a very slow moving unit. But but can build has bulky health and can build um, better stronger units. Striker is very fast, uh, builds light vehicles, and yeah, engineer can build everything very very quickly and is not the strongest. And the the other four the fourth character or fourth class in the game literally gives you an equal balance of everything, uh, at least a ma- medium balance of all the other of all three classes so each one comes with an advantage now in this game you can build anything you can build ground units you can build hovercraft well yeah you can build infantry hovercraft uh tanks uh helicopter weird or just floating gunships and uh airfields and just yeah you can even create uh defenses and objects that can um literally summon meteorites to hit the ground and destroy enemy units this game is crazy, to be honest. You, you literally can build anything. It also gives you time limits on estimates of how long items it will take to build. You have defenses that are, can shoot lasers. Uh, I think there's a uh, a type uh, a weapon that can actually uh, zap the enemy base from a dist far from base, so you can shoot them from your base. Um, there's, you can also build crazy, it's just a, it's a very crazy game. Um, there's also other game modes that, besides just, like, base building and attacking each other, like, for example, I think it's wave bait, there's a wave base mode, there's a survival mode, there's a, some type of alien chicken that'll land on the ground, you have to fight that. Um, yeah. Also, another interesting thing about this game, um, when damage is done to the plane of field, like actual to the, like the map, and like there's mountains, hills, mountains and hills will disappear. 
the environment of the ground in the on the map can actually be damaged and be destroyed. You can also um, level and build hills, if, if I recall. There's a tool that can allow you to build little mountain hills. Um, but don't, don't quote me. You guys should try this game out for yourself to tell me you think. It's free. This is 100% free. Um, I believe this is actually still under development, too. This is absolutely 100% free. Check it out. Um, I can't, I believe it's an indie dev who's working on this, but yeah. Check this game out. It's been out for a long time. I've been pretty, it doesn't, not many people know about it. So I, I'm giving you guys the option to, to learn about it. So you should go check it out and play it. Or at least give it a try. So I hope you guys enjoyed all the games on this list. And I hope you do check it out. I do know I've been listening to myself speak. Yes, I have. There's like a weird blow in with my nose and sorry. Uh, I tried. I moved my mic away from my face. It's not working. I don't know. My nose, I guess, creates whistle sounds at, when I breathe. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe as usual. I'm sorry this is late. And I hope you do actually try these games. There will be links to all these games in the description. Also, hit the subscribe button. And if you think you know someone who loves RTSs, Share the video. It really helps. See you guys in the next video. Peace.